Coach Chad Dennis of the Harrison Wildcats out of the greater Cincinnati area. Did I get everything right there? Did I get everything right? Did I introduce you correctly there? You can call me whatever you want, but yes, Cincinnati, Ohio, Harrison, Wildcats, um, boys, girls, all of it. You, you, okay, so. I remember coming down there for an OEC event, probably 2018. What, what, what was when you guys probably hosted the last one that I was at. Does that sound yeah. about right? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. So I remember coming down and I interviewed Chloe Deerwester as a, as a, she was a girl, probably like a fifth or sixth grade girl. And I remember you were like, Hey man, she's going to be really good. And you introduced me to Rob and, um, uh, you weren't, you weren't lying. You weren't wrong. She's pretty good. Yeah. And, um, you guys won the first ever girl state championship in the OHSAA state wrestling history this year in 2023. Congratulations coach for making history and being the first ever. But if you'd have told me five years ago that this was going to happen in five years, it's six years, right? Um, I'd have called you crazy and uh, I, I'd be glad to call you crazy, man, because you had vision and that's what visionaries do. Sometimes people think they're a little crazy. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, I think so. And I, and I think one of the things that uh, people underestimate was uh, how passionate the parents of the, the girls were, um, you know, and I think uh, the wrestling community, if, if people ever put the term crazy on them, I think they would be right. So why would girls wrestling be any different than boys wrestling? I think, uh, crazy uh fits in all aspects of wrestling so talking in the sanction i had a, a couple different guests on you know this is barbarian hour we haven't done we're bringing barbarian hour back by the way um there you after go. some high we're, we're big supporters big yes, supporters I, of barbarian i know you're a big fan um this one he oh he does he does have the he there does have it there for me you know we're co-branding with ohio but um you know josh sassy does a great job and you know we're, we're 75 plus now into this uh podcast and i know that you had a podcast but yeah. podcasting is not everybody thinks you can just you know it's ah, let's have a conversation and not all of them are going to be great but you know you got to build your following and you got to let people see what you have to offer so it's not always easy but yeah. you had a podcast how did you balance head coaching starting boys head coaching starting a girls program and podcasting how are you able to do all those <clears> things well, I think if you're passionate about something, it probably becomes a little bit easier. Um, you know, when you when you talked about visionaries and you talked about uh, the girls thing, I told everybody. Um, now, look, when you make statements, you don't know if the statements are going to come true. But I said when when wrestling starts and the girls, there's a girl state tournament. We're going to win it. Um, now, look, there's a lot of pieces that have to fall into place when you when you st say something like that. Um you know, I was just a piece of the puzzle. Uh, now, obviously, you have to be the supporter of of the vision because, um, you know, I've been at Harrison for 25 years now. So uh, anything that goes through the wrestling program, I would hope they would at least look for my input on. Um, we handle things a little bit differently than I think a lot of people do. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why Southwest Ohio and Central Ohio are probably ahead of the game when it comes to girls as opposed to um, where people put uh, you know, Northeast Ohio being ahead in the boys game, but uh, maybe lagging, lagging a little bit in the girls game. Um, but as far as how do you balance it? I don't know. I think if you're passionate about something and you have good people around you, uh, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, you know, you know this and, and look, you can do a podcast at any time of the night. So I would get on uh, with guys, you know, 10 o'clock at night and, and talk wrestling and, you know, instead of what, instead of binge watching Netflix or, or something like that, I'd, I'd, I'd rather talk wrestling than binge watch Netflix. So, um, you know, during the day, you know, you teach and, and you do the same and, and, but we're passionate about wrestling. You give back to wrestling. I give back to wrestling. I work with youth. I work with girls. I work with boys. Um, so, you know, you just keep your eye on the prize and, and keep good people around you and, and good things happen. How did the boys initially take the girls being added and you guys went so full force forward at it. And you were, you know, the best program in Ohio, which obviously is going to make you one of the best programs in the country, but how did the boys, you know, you're the head coach for the boys. How did that 
relationship go between the boys wrestling varsity team and the girls varsity wrestling team in Harrison? Well, it, it was nice because uh, with Chloe and Reagan, um, they were two that uh, could cross over and practice with the boys. So uh, the boys, you know, saw that, look, and again, I'm going to back up a little bit. We, we practice together. We're probably one of the few programs that practices together. Um, we do it because I think it's very important. I think if we want to grow the sport of wrestling, I think the boys have to support the girls and the girls have to support the boys. Um, and I think right now um, there's a, there's some animosity that happens between um, girls and boys in different programs. So when people ask me, how do you make it work? Well, you do the same things. And, and so when, when the girls are doing something, the boys are doing the same things and we hold them both to a high standard. Um, and, you know, and I'm not going to say there haven't been rocky times or there haven't been, um, you know, boys being boys or girls being girls. Uh, but I think as coaches, if we hold them to a high standard uh, and, and we support uh, the boys, support the girls, the girls support the boys. Uh, we include the girls when we're talking about doing certain things we and, and we do vice versa with the boys uh, I just I think if you don't give them an option I think it, it becomes pretty easy um, you know boys look for leadership uh, and that's my job as, as the head coach is to to give them leadership and um, you know and I think now as the younger boys are starting to come up now it's it's just the norm so it's now it's it's a pretty easy process and you know you've had um you know, you have a daughter that's – she's a college graduate now, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. You have from, a daughter – the great, the great Kent State University. The Kent State University, right? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, she's a college graduate. She was a Matt Stat, right? Yeah. Um, You know, your family at every level. You have a son. You have a son that wrestles. So, I mean, you're involved at every level of this, right? Your kids have been around it. You've been around it. You've made it the family sport. When you went all in on this girls – you know, the girls wrestling – and you guys went all in, man. And it was getting sanctioned was obviously the big part. I had Dom DeSabato on the, when you guys got sanctioned. Um, I've had Vanessa Oswald on. She's the, they were the runner-up right. team with Olin Tangy Berlin. So great, we're talking about teams. Yeah, some really key characters and some key players and coaches who were involved in this monumental uh, undertaking, I thought, to get added into the OHSA and become a sanctioned sport. Because before that, it was Coaches Association, right? Right. What was that like? Talk me through the process. You know, Dom came on. He had his experience. Vanessa came on. She had her experience. What was your experience, Coach Dennis? Well, I, I will tell you that, that one of the, the best things that, that happened for us is that Chris Baird and I have been coaching together my 25 years at Harrison. So he's been my assistant varsity coach uh, for 25 years. So we've been together that whole time. Um, just so happened that when we were starting a girls program, um, he was looking to, I don't want to say, you know, change scenery, get a fresh outlook. Um, he had a son that was wrestling in college, uh, and he had a daughter that was getting ready to come through the program. So he said, you know what? He said, I'll kind of, you know, be, be more on that girl's side. Um, and so since we have worked together for so long. Um, and Chris and I have conversations about everything. Um, you know, I still look for his input when we're making decisions about boys, uh, obviously, um, you know, being, being the head of the program, um, you know, I have a lot of input on what goes on in the girls, but it takes people like Chris Baird, uh, who was willing to sit down in those meetings, <laughs> sit down in the, um, you know, with the, um, Vanessa Oswalt's and Brian Nicholas and, Dave wrestlers and, 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 you know, and Dom DeSabados, all the people, Sean Andrews, that were big into um, wrestling and everybody knew that Harrison was a huge supporter of girls wrestling. Um, so uh, I think once that happened and Chris was willing to be a part of that, Rob Deerwester was a huge part of that. Um, we just did it together. Um, you know, and, and I think that anybody that goes into this alone or looks to do it by themselves is making a huge mistake. It takes your administration. It takes the coaches around you and it takes, you got to beat the halls and get some girls to come out. Um, you know, where there still aren't very many people that have full teams. Um, so, you know, those are, there's still battles uh, to fight. 
Um, but we're, we're de definitely making some good headway and, and having good people around you, like I've said so many times, is, is huge. So when I look at the state program, I crack it open. Is it going to be your name or Coach Beard's name next to the championship for the head coach? Are, they, are you co-head coaches? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it'll say. I think I think I'm <laughs> That's a good question, as, right? That's yeah, a good question. I, know. I think I think I'm listed as the head coach, but you know, he got uh, girls uh uh state coach of the year. So I, I think um, you know, yeah. I will call it call it whatever you want. I he deserves a lot of credit. I think, you know, I deserve credit. Rob Deerwest deserves credit. Mark Mivers, our athletic director, deserves a, a lot of credit. And like so, like I said, I think everybody holds a piece to the success. I don't think it's, it's one person. And I think, you know, I think, you know, look, I, obviously I've always been the, the, uh, figurehead at the, at the front of the program. Um, so a lot of that stuff comes to me. Um, but I've said it from the get go. I mean, obviously you got to get the kids to do it. You gotta, you gotta have the kids in your program. You gotta have parents involved. Um, there's just so many pieces of the puzzle. You get it done. You know, you guys come in there and, um, uh, was Warren, did Warren end up third in the girls? Yes, they did. So, so Warren they had a hell of a tournament. Yeah, they had a really good tournament. Yeah. Um, when we look at that, though, like, it was funny. I was talking to Coach Oswald, and she's like, hey, you know, don't jinx us. I don't know if we're going to get second yet, you know, because I was, you know, I'm trying to run around cover. I'm covering three, tur four tournaments, essentially, right? right? And right. I'm trying to interview the girls. I'm trying to interview three divisions of boys, and it's really hard to do, man. But the cool thing about it is all the girls are super accessible. Not everybody's always very accessible because, you know, they're they're celebrating with their families. There's a lot going on, man. Yeah. And um, every girl I tried to talk to, got an interview with, any coach I went to, everybody was available. I think everybody gets the promotion of it. I think everybody yeah. gets <clears throat> the media standpoint on it and getting it out there and letting people see it. And I think ultimately what happens is, um, and this is just me, I'm not saying you, we didn't even talk about this, but. I think they add a division eventually, maybe. Like I, you had two divisions, right? I mean, you mean that... for girls? Yeah, I th I think we're a ways off on that. I'll be honest. Um, yeah, you know, you you look at some of the weight classes and in, in, in our regional tournament uh, in Southwest, we had one weight class with twenty one, and then you know one with six. Gotcha. So, you know, I th I think we might be you know a decent amount away from that. I think the depth, obviously. Um, isn't necessarily there yet. Uh, it's better this year than it was last year. So I assume it'll be better next year than it was this year. Um, so it's just going to keep getting better. I, I think we're probably a little bit away from that, you know, and, and look, let's just be honest. You, you add a division. I, I think that that probably um, puts a cramp in, in the state tournament. Um, you well, know, you got it. You got to go another day. You got to add another yeah. day. Uh, uh, look, I, I mean, I I don't know I don't know who went to school on Monday, um, but I know I didn't. Um, that was know. a question for everybody. Do you know the only person who I who answered I'm going to school tomorrow? This is not going to shock you, Marcus Blaze. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I and then it. Joe Blaze three, big Joe Blaze three, sends me a picture of Marcus Blaze walking into school on Monday, and I'm like, well, that's probably why Marcus Blaze is going to be on world teams. Probably why Marcus Blaze is going to end up at Michigan, Ohio State, Oklahoma State, or, or Penn State, right? Like that, that you know, that's just the type of guy that is. But it was, it's rough. It's it rough. Was. It's well, rough. I you, went, I went Monday, by the way. Yeah, well, hey, you, you were a better man than me, but I'll, I'll tell you the, the coaching the boys and then backing it right up into the girls. Oh yeah. Oh. There, we there oh. was one time we had four girls on the mat at the same time. Wow. So how many qualifiers did you have, Coach Jenna, we had eight. Dennis? We, well, we had seven and we got an alternate in. Okay. So we ended up with eight. What were the amount of how many placers? We had four. Four placers. How many champs? Two. Two champs, two placers. It, it, think about that. You can win now how teams in the 80s and 90s could win the boys' divisions. Right. Yeah. When's it going to turn into hey, hey, let's just talk about this. When's it going to turn into super teams? When's it going to turn into Graham, St. Ed's, uh, Legacy Christian? When's it well, going to turn I'll be into honest. that? I, I think I don't. I don't think that's far off. I. I mean, I think. I think everything is going in that direction. I mean, with, you know, you you look in college at the transfer portal. It's oh. usually only a couple of years before that stuff trickles down into high schools. Um, You're I, right. I, I think. It, I think it's going to be. I think it's really hard. I've said this from the beginning, and I and I and I will hold to this 
I think it's really hard to make kids commit to a program and then say they're tied to that program for four years and some things change. Maybe an administration fires a coach or a coach decides to leave. Um, you know, it makes it real hard on the kids when there's not sustainability in a program. Um, look, we're unusual. I, I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. I'm one of the oldest coaches out there. There, there aren't Crazy. that many older than me. No, you're right. People you're... aren't making this a career anymore. No. And I think it's with this newest generation millennials. Millennials are going to do multiple careers, man. They're not going to be in coaching and teaching for 30, 35 years anymore. They're going to do two or three different careers. You and realize that, right? These, yeah, and people are into these pop-up teams, and I and I don't get it. You know, I, I just don't understand it. Um, I've, I've been at Harrison for 25 years. I'm going to be here until I retire. So, uh, you know, I don't understand it. Um, you know, I want to be there for the kids of Harrison. And and look, I mean, there's no secret. We're open in enrollment. Um, but we, we hardly ever get open enrollment kids. Yeah. Um, you know, and I and I – and I'll I'll say it out loud and I'll say it on a on a you know a podcast that goes out to everybody. I for the life of me, I don't understand why someone would pay twelve thousand dollars to go to a school down the street when they can come to Harrison for free. Um, you know, we have all the AP offerings. And I'm with you. So here I'm with you because my wife and I are both public school teachers, right? And when people bring that up and I'm like, well, we're public we're public school teachers. People ask, where are you gonna send your kids to high school? I'm like, what do you mean? We live in the Kenston School District, three miles away. That's where we're sending our kids. Right. We didn't. We didn't pick. We didn't. I didn't search for this house for two years and this property for two years, and for this location for two years, in order for me to be like, ah, oh, no, we're gonna send them to Walsh. We're gonna send them to Hoban. We're gonna send them yeah. to St. Ads. Or I didn't. I. It's, that was never. It's. That's not the intent. The intent no. is we're in Kenston. We're gonna go to Kenston. Yeah. My wife lived in Ann Arbor. She went to Pioneer High School. I lived in Oak Harbor. We went to Oak Harbor. And I lived, yeah. I, hold on. That's funny because um, we we actually left Oak Harbor. My brother Ferd was a state qualifier at Genoa as a sophomore. And then they had, my dad had some differences with uh, the, the head coach. Um, and um, my dad went and voiced it at like a board meeting. It was like, hey, there's, there's some issues here, right? Some unethical issues, right? right. Um. And uh, they were just like, yeah, go go kick rocks, hillbilly. So guess what? We moved, we, right, we, moved, we moved directly across the street. We moved under 150 yards. The house I grew up in from age one, zero to seven is under 150 yards into the modular home that my dad put over a basement and that we all lived in for four years, three years together. Yeah. Think about that. that you know what I mean? Like, we did it when we did it. We did it for the right reason. We did it because, I mean, the the head coach bought my dad, my brother, beer. <laughs> right. My dad walked in on it, but it's like you can't drink beer with the kid. What are you I'm doing? I'm pretty sure that's not okay. No, no. <laughs> and my and, and my dad and dude, we're hillbillies, right? We're we're all rough, but like my dad was not okay with that. He was yeah. not all right with the teacher coach buying my brother a six pack of beer. Right, my sixteen-year-old brother, and and that's why we left Oak Harbor. That's or that's why we left Genoa. I, yeah. I well, listen. If you want to hear reasons, I think that's a pretty damn good reason to leave a school. Yeah. And then you go and you and you say to the the adults and and the, the administration, and it falls on deaf ears. Come on. Yeah, well, I don't think that would fall on deaf ears nowadays. Oh, I mean... oh no! <laughs> well, first off, there'd be a Snapchat story of it. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I, I just I, I'm 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 a huge proponent. Like I, I look at the academics of our school. My my oldest daughter um, was uh, you know top twenty in her class. My daughter that's a freshman right now, she knows everything about wrestling, but doesn't want to wrestle. Um, she's a volleyball player, um, and uh, you know she's number one in her class. Um, you know my my son is super smart, doesn't try real hard in school, but I think that's just boys as opposed to girls. Um, but you know, I, I look at the academic offerings. And so obviously I'm someone that holds academics uh, important. I teach AP statistics, um, you know, so I hold academics important. And, I, and so when people make the statements, I'm going there for X or I'm going there for Y. No, most parents are going certain places because they want to say and 
and what goes on in the program or in their kids world. Um, you know, but I, I look at it as we, we have the academic offerings for you. We have a, we have a really good wrestling program, wrestling facilities. We have a great, uh, opportunity to have an administration that supports us. Um, I, I don't know why you go down the street. So here's my thing with you. When you say that, um, I don't know if a lot of the parents and the students, the kids, um, ultimately understand that this ends, this yeah. ends someday, right? Like, um, this ends. And they all uh, think they're D, they're all, they all think they're getting D1 scholarships. Everybody thinks they're D1. It's funny. I was talking to my nephew, Ian, tonight, and, um, he's the coach at App State. And, uh, uh App State. I know that's right. You're a, you're a UTC mock, aren't you? Yeah. So, you know, we're talking and um, the reality of what the transfer portal has done and Coach Anderson and I talked about it last night on the Kent State Wrestling Talk. It's ultimately almost like those SoCon and the MAC schools, they're almost fighting the battle to where they're almost going to be two-year JUCO stops for guys. Correct. Yeah. I think about when Ian said that to me tonight, I was like, oh, my God, that's a great yeah, point. Yeah, because once a, once a guy – once a guy's ranked in the country, now he has the opportunity. He'll go to, you know, he'll go to, he'll get picked up by an Iowa state or, yep. you know, Indiana, you know, Indiana, Indiana, Michigan state, whoever, you know, whatever. I don't know if Indiana and Michigan state are doing NIL deals, but I know that Iowa state, they've done that. They got, they got guys from Buffalo. Right. Yeah. And, um, is he Alenic? Alenic is the, uh, 65 pounder from Northern from Illinois. Northern Illinois. He, he right. took eighth in the country this year in the portal. Right. Yeah. Like, and, and hold on. I don't blame. No, old, I don't blame him. I'm not, I'm not just budging, just budging his name. I'm not, I'm not slandering him. I'm not saying anything negative about that kid. Yeah. I would do the same thing. Right. I got an opportunity, but there comes the loyalty factor to a guy like Ryan Ludwig. You know what I mean? There's this, there's these, there's, there's this, there's balance, man. There's balance. No, and-, and I'm, and I'm a huge loyalty guy. So, I mean, I, I have a hard time with that. Um, so I have a hard time with kids coming through our junior high and then thinking that the grass is greener yeah. somewhere else. Well, I want you to think about this. Let's at least talk about like Lucas Davison, right? Two-time All-American, um, Northwestern. Uh, I talked to his dad, Keith. Keith's a good guy. <clears throat> um, I think the Sterniolo was getting contacted and in the process at Oklahoma, right? Mm-hmm. So what do you do if you're Lucas Davison? Sterniola yeah. did a fabulous job at Northwestern with 24 guys on the roster and really intense, uh, a private school, the only private school in the Big Ten. He did What that guy did there was amazing. What do you do if you're Lucas Davison and the guy who you're there with and then your brother graduates? What do you do if you're him? Well, that's what I said. That's that's I, I do. I don't fault the guys that, you know, are, are, are there and have a relationship with a coach. And then that coach leaves and what you're going to fault the kid for for not wanting to look elsewhere. Yeah. You know, I, I, I yeah, just, what's, I what's, think, I, and listen, I don't know. I don't know. What's a Dylan Russo do now? Yeah. The Dylan Russo, I asked him, I was like, hey, why are you going to Oklahoma? And that's a kid that's an 18 year old kid. Right. It's going to leave his home in Columbus, Ohio and go to Norman, Oklahoma. And the reason he was going to Norman, Oklahoma is the Rosales. The kid, the kid was his teammate. Right. You know what I mean? He has a great relationship with that family. That's hard for that kid now. And we don't know. I don't know. None of us. Yeah, know. but you know, I, but I will say, I mean, it, I think it's hard to give up the opportunity to go Big Twelve or or Big Ten. Yeah. No, and you're I not mean, wrong. You know, good luck so, to that kid, man. He's a great kid. Yeah. And um, obviously, he's got great coaches. I love Mark Marinelli. Great family friend forever. But that that kid's in a tough spot, man. And, uh, you know, Lucas Davison was in a tough spot. And both of them stem from the Oklahoma job, right? When like Davison went where? He went Michigan, right? Michigan, yeah. yeah. And, and and here's the other thing. Everybody's talking about the bag. Talking about the bag. The bag of shekels, of coins, right? I got the bag. Give me the bag. And uh, the Nagao guy leaving Minnesota or in the process of leaving Minnesota. What do you say to someone in a sport yeah. like wrestling? We're, we're not – you're not – listen – Look, you You're got right, right at right. You got an opportunity to make some money in wrestling. You got to take it because because it, <laughs> it, there there ain't much. I, I ain't mad at Nagao, man. I ain't I ain't mad at Davison. I'm not mad at uh, uh, Elenic. I'm not. I, you got to give the guys credit. They earned what's being offered to them, but yeah. at the same time, 
ones that run off the rails and where's the happy meaning? You know what I mean? I just, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. I'm yeah. not going to throw stones at people who I don't know their story and they've earned in some cases, six figure deals. Well, and I'm with you. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know where it stops. I don't know where it's going. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I'm not a college coach cause <laughs> Um, I, I don't know how you do that. And, you know, look, that's a job that if you don't win, you, you don't keep your job. Um, oh, you it's know. done though. It's a done deal, man. If you're not getting the job done, you're see you later skater. And, and look, people aren't lining up to be head high school wrestling coaches. Um, you know, they are not, I don't, maybe in Northeast Ohio, they are, but they're they not. Are not lining no. up down here. I want you to think about this, the huge fall off in Northeast Ohio with, the Tony Di Giovanni's leaving the sport of wrestling, the Graham Coghills leaving the sport of wrestling, the legendary coaches, you know, Jamie Milkovich, you know, leaving and or in, you know, in the process about to leave the right. sport of wrestling. Look at the guys in this area that have left the sport of wrestling. I mean, this is tough, man. Like you said, this, this is not easy. And there's not lines around the doors, and I don't think high school parents understand that. Well, and I'll, I'll be honest. When when I do retire, you, I, you, if you find me in a wrestling room ever, I'll lay money that there's a grandkid in there. That's the only <laughs> way I'm hitting a wrestling room ever again. I'll get you observed. I'll have to send you to the psych ward if, you, if, you, if you're just in there hanging out. No, for sure. Um, um, but, you, you, you know, I, I – I think about things that you do to try to keep it fresh though. And I, and I do think the girls has, has created a little bit, you know, like I said, I think we're one of the few teams that, that practices together. And I don't want that to ever change. You know, I don't know if we're, if we'll run into a space issue eventually. Um, but I don't well, want that's, it. To that's change. a good problem. You want, you want to run into that. Yeah. I, you know, but the, the fact of the matter is it's, you know, when you're in a school district, you, generally only have one wrestling room. Maybe you have a junior high room and a high school room. Um, but if girls and boys don't practice together and they have to practice at different times, where's your youth going to practice? Yeah. You know, and, and people don't, don't think about those, those long-term problems. And, and I'll be honest, I think, you know, practicing together stops that divisiveness or stops um, you know, I see it in Southwest Ohio. I see some coaches that don't necessarily get along and, you know, and I see at the state tournament, you know, some of these hard headed people that are like, girls don't belong here. And I'm like, you guys are nuts. This sport needs to grow. We, we always talk about why, why don't people want to come see our sport? And we have a whole separate population that we can include in our sport and we're going to alienate them. Yeah. That makes I mean, sense. I want you to think about this. What happens if I just don't we don't we don't film any of the girls' matches? I don't do any interviews with any girls or girls coaches, and we totally ignore it. What does that say? Yeah, I, no, I what's that say? What's that well, do? Right? Good, good, good luck. Cause I, like I said, wrestling wrestling parents are crazy, and I don't care if it's boys or girls. They'll, like, they'll be coming after you. Could I have done more interviews or tried to track more people down or I couldn't have done more matches because we we did all the finals. We did all the semis. We did as many quarters as we could. Rob Gore's a maniac. He loves um, covering the girls wrestling. So he does a great job. And, you know, we have all those matches and we've uploaded most of them to the YouTube channel. But, like, it's a lot of work. And But we need – they need the exposure. And, and it, it, dude, I haven't been able to get to those uh, – the, the Ohio Coaches Association State Tournaments. Or I haven't been able to do that because it's always on dates where my kids have stuff. Or my nephews have stuff. Right. And and listen, I'm not missing my kids' stuff and my nephews' stuff to go cover something that's a part time job. I'm not doing right. it. I'm well, not doing it. And you don't believe and you you're not like, oh, up, you better be doing this. No. But 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 you know, one thing I will say is, you know, it like you said, the girls were very approachable. The coaches were very pro they're excited yeah. um, to be there. They were excited to talk to you. They're excited to talk to anybody about what they're doing. Yeah. You know. There are still boys or boys coaches sometimes that I don't want to say are bothered, but, you know, look, it. they've been there for so long and they've done it. This is all new to the girls. They're so excited about it. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and our boys were down on the floor with our girls getting the team trophy. I saw you know, that. 
I saw that. Yeah. That was awesome. I have a video of that actually. That that's pretty amazing. Um, they told they told us that that we couldn't send bring everybody out, and I said this is the first state title that our school has ever won. Is are you are you guys? That's the first yes. state title ever yes. in school history and anything. Yes. Anything. Congratulations, man. For, for as a team, you know, we've had individuals yeah, yeah, yeah. win. I get that. But, but I said, you think I'm going to tell my superintendent that he has to stay up in the stands? You think I'm not bringing my AD down here? I told the guy, I said, you're crazy. I said, kick him out. You're not kicking him out. I, well, I, I'll, I'll do whatever I got to do to get all these people down on the floor. I love it. Well, look, hey, St. Ed's and Graham always bring their youth kids down and all everybody they want to bring down. So what? what's – come on. Yeah, but it's come good on. for if the you... goose. It's good for the gander. Come on. Well, on LHSAA, really, I mean, uh, that was a cluster at the end. Oh, the awards. Jesus. Oh, you can't. Dad, my blood pressure's been 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 great all day, and then you bring that up. What? That was, that was absolute, absolute abomination, man. What on earth was that? And whose idea was that? I don't know, fight, but no one cause, knew where cause to go. fire them. Write them up and fire them. No one knew where to go. No one knew what to oh. do. Um, <laughs> my AD's like, is it like this all the time? And now it's like, never, never ever been. been like this, as a matter of fact. No. So. Hey, wh where did you go to high school? Fairfield. What year did you graduate? 91. So how much older are you than Willie? Three years? Willie was a freshman when I was a senior. So he's freshman, you're senior. So we were and in so the state he, finals at the same time. You guys were both in the finals at the same time. Who would you wrestle in the finals? Joe Plaus. Who was it? Joe Plaus. You wrestled Joe. You want to know who put my washer in? Joe, Joe Plaus. And Tracy beat Joe Plaus in the state finals. Did you know Year that? Before. Yeah, Year and before. They, they said no one would come within 10 points of Joe Plaus. Uh, threw him to his back. I don't I don't like to talk. I still never watched the what? match. What? Let's talk. I, I threw him to his back first 10 seconds of the match. Um, he screams out. I get zero points. What? Um, I lose six five. <laughs> no way. Um, was he hey, Akron you know North? What? Akron huh? North. Akron North. Yeah, we wrestled. We wrestled a couple weeks later at one of the qualifiers, and um, it made it worse because I beat him, and that just uh, made it worse. Um, yeah, he put, you know, he put he my washer in. Yeah, he got a full ride to Pitt, and I got a partial ride to Chattanooga. At UTC, um. Yeah. Were there Ohio guys on the team with you at you know, uh, Tennessee Chattanooga? Yeah, Jason Laughlin um, and Dave Barden. Uh, both were Fairfield guys with me. Um, by the time we were seniors, I was ranked uh, top 15, and Barden was uh, – he was top six, top eight ranked. And is that when the SOCON only took like 10 or 11 qualifiers? Yeah. I, I had to uh, – my senior year was 12, so I won it, and I beat a kid in overtime. And he only had three losses on the year, and so he got one of the, the wild cards. Okay. So, yeah. what year did you qualify for the NCAAs? Ninety five. Ninety three and ninety six. So you qualified year and senior. Yeah. Bookends, huh? Yeah. What did you do as a freshman? Did you win the conference? Yeah. Upset a guy uh, that I had on my podcast. He was one of my. He was an no way. guy. Who'd you beat? Uh, Shamari Rozier. Um, Okay. App State guy. He was uh and he's a great guy. I mean, you know, we wrestled probably six times. I think we were three and three against each other. Um one was to go to the natty though, buddy. Yeah, I beat him in overtime to go to the natty. Did he ever then beat you to go to qualify for nationals and you didn't go? Did he ever do that uh, to you then? The, the next no, the next year I, I lost uh I lost to a nap guy, but it wasn't it wasn't Shamari. He beat me the following year. We split the following year. He beat gotcha. me in uh he beat me at the North Carolina Open, and then I think I beat him in the duel. Um, so, yeah, it's it was, uh, App State. I, I had some battles with App State guys, for sure. Did, did you uh, – was was Lean your coach? My senior year. So, Lean was your coach your senior year. Okay. Yeah, I got uh, – we, we won't talk about that. Okay. So, let me tell you my – you want – you're gonna you're gonna listen to my Chattanooga story. All right. I don't know. I don't want to smile about this because it's weird. It's weird. It's very weird, actually. Um. So we wrestled them. Kent State wrestled Chattanooga in the duel at Citadel. So we wrestled them at Citadel. What year? Ninety nine or two thousand. Ninety nine two thousand season. Okay. Um. 
I wrestled this guy and it like became almost like a fist fight. And uh, the guy was a freshman and I think I was a red shirt freshman. And this guy and I just like, we basically fist fought. 2000, 2001. His name was David Tyner. Okay. Yeah. He's yeah. Do you know who that is? I know him. Yeah. Oh, you know him? Well, I mean, I, I mean, he was, he was a, a high school guy when I was in college, you know, and some of those guys would come around. He's a serial killer. Oh, is he? David Tyner is the cat house killer. I don't, I listen, this is such coach Anderson. And I talked about this. He killed, he killed one of the ladies who was on that HBO bunny house, the bunny ranch. Yeah. He killed one of the stars of that reality television show. And then he burned them down inside the house and both the women he killed were pregnant. So, uh, how wild is that? How wild is that? Then and I'm I was just like, going to oh, go ahead. Oh my and, God. It was insane, dude. I'm just going to go ahead and say that he probably didn't graduate from Chattanooga. Then. So he was a Marine and he was there one year. Okay. He was a Marine. And then he was the leader in a native American gang in Oklahoma. Cause he was from Oklahoma. Dude, this guy was, this dude was stone cold. It was like a fist fight. Like okay, this he, dude and I were basically fighting. Did you beat him? I did. Okay. Huh? Yeah. And he, but he won the SOCON. Dude, I beat three conference champs that you're not in qualify. That's just how it goes. Yeah. yeah um, I, mean, I beat is. the ACC champ. And then I beat the guy that won the Eastern Regional and they had an Eastern Regional. I don't know if you remember that Eastern Regional. Yeah. 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 I beat that guy. And then I might have beat, I beat the ACC champ. He was from North Carolina. I was going to say the following year, I I did I didn't qualify. I beat an All American that was the ACC champ from North Carolina. It's just funny how that stuff works. It's just crazy, man. Yeah, I lost a one point match to Josh Lumbrick. Oh yeah, yeah. He was at Chattanooga, and then he's he at Chattanooga, to Oklahoma. and then Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah, dude, it's just crazy to think about it, like how tough college wrestling is, and what it was, and now what it has become. Man, it's still really obviously very tough, but what I think what's coming now is eventually you're going to start seeing teams stack two and three deep with the NIL deals. Right. And so other teams can have them. Well, I think, you, you know, and, and I, and I've said this from the beginning, I think we're, we're at a crossroads when it comes to, to boys wrestling and um, we're losing the middle of the road kids where we have plenty of kids that have never wrestled and aren't very good. And the elite are probably better than they've ever been. Yeah. Um, no, but, they're but, so good. But if we want to sustain this sport that we love so much, uh, we got to figure out a way to keep those kids that aren't year round wrestlers that are just in the sport. I say this uh, on, I'll, and I'll keep saying it. I, I can never give back to wrestling what it's given me. And so I want everybody to have that opportunity and we're losing kids that should have that opportunity because um, they realize I don't want to wrestle year round and I can't keep up with this kid. So, you know what, I'm just going to go work and make money or go buy this new car or whatever. And, and we're, we're losing the opportunity to have some of these kids. And, and so I think that's one of the reasons why girls wrestling is, is fresh and, and you're getting, um, some of these kids, but it's going to happen everywhere. Like you said, when, you know, when will these super teams start? Well, when the super teams start, that's when a lot of the kids that live in the community don't have a place to compete. Yeah. It's uh, it's wild to see it because if you look at Graham, I don't think a lot of people understand that St. Paris, St. Paris school. is the town. Yes. It is not a, people think it's a private school. I'm like, no, it's this hillbilly yeah, town. But let's, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, people come from all over most of their kids oh, are, no, 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 are taking no, no. online yeah. most yes. of their kids are taking online school i mean yes well it's crazy as one of my college roommates and college teammates is the superintendent for graham chad lensman is the superintendent for graham chad lensman um awesome freaking guy but he's a graham guy and i think he's able to navigate a lot of that because he was on the first team of jordans of jeff jordans sorry he was on the second team when they, they won in 98, they didn't win in 99, and then they won in 2000, and they've won every D2 title since. Right. Chad was on one of those. He was on that. He was on both those teams, actually. Right. So Chad Unsman, if anybody gets it more than him, 
And he's and guess what? He's got a son in the program. Yeah. And it might turn into a situation where a kid comes from California, Arizona, which they've had kids come from both of those places that Wyoming. might displace that could Wyoming that could actually displace his kid. Right. Well, you know, and, and that's, that's just that's part all. of the deal though. I think, I mean, I agree, but, but you know, it, it, what's crazy is, you know, like my son, my son's a true eighth grader. Um, and, you know, we're wrestling all these kids that are on their first holdback or their second holdback. And, and uh, you know, all the kids, he was wrestling a kid from Graham this year. And the kid told him like, yeah, I mean, we pretty much know that uh, most of us are going to get held back in either sixth or eighth grade. Yeah. Um, I tried to send my kid to kindergarten this year. And my wife's like, he's not ready. I'm like, but I want him out of our house a year earlier. And she was like, no. And um, so between all the Millers, my brother Tate and I both flunked uh, first grade. Ian flunked second grade. Wyatt flunked first grade. My nephew Bodie flunked second grade. It's because we're not very smart and our development was low. It wasn't because my dad's like, ah, we got to, and my brothers are like, yeah, I got these guys another year. We got to get these guys, you know, they got to be at the top end of the grade. That ain't why we did it. Yeah, I was 17 when I graduated. I was a mush mouth. I couldn't talk. Right. I was a gibbering idiot. I didn't know the alphabet until like third grade. Yeah. That's why you do that. That's why you do that. I had a nephew that wasn't reading at grade level. I got a nephew who has, uh, who's dyslexic. Those are real reasons, in my opinion. When, so when I was like, oh, what about the uh, – okay, what do you want to talk about? You want to talk about we had a nephew who wasn't at grade level reading? Or you think that's good just to push him through and have him be behind his whole academic career? No. Yeah, but you're you're talking about holdbacks for a different reason than, than what Yeah, I yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's my point. Like, yeah. you're like, oh, what about the Miller? Well, I'm telling you straight up, for the record, every Miller that flunked, we earned it. Trust me. We were dunces. They should have made us the cone and we should have wore the dunce cap, dude. Yeah. You know, it's it, wild. It, it's wild, though. It's just the world we're in. Hey, it's like everything polarization. Mm-hmm. Polarization. Oh, no, for sure. There's, everything's, there's no middle ground in anything anymore. Well, and politics, me, religion, name a thing, athletics. Everything's polarized. Well, and people ask me how I feel about it, and I always tell them I really don't feel anything because I don't have control over it. Yeah. I only have control over one kid. You know, yours. Right, yeah, yours. I, got, I get control over mine. That's it. You know, the rest of them, I, I, I don't worry about them. People are like, does it bother you? I can say it bothers me or I can say it doesn't bother me. It doesn't really matter because I don't have any control over it. Correct. And OHSAA is making it easier and easier for them. So people are going to play within the rules. Yeah. Uh, well, I just got to be honest with you. I went and picked the basketball hoop up tonight with three basketballs. My wife got it from some Facebook marketplace. She's like, hey, I dropped my kid off at baseball. And then all of a sudden my wife shows up and I'm like, what's going on? And I took my truck and she's like, can you go pick that up? And I was like, I, I guess so. And, you know, I, it's just, what am I going to do? Not let my kid play basketball? Hey, it's okay. Let him play basketball. What am I going to do? You, you think you think they're going to be built like a basketball player? I don't know. Maybe. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's, Probably not. I mean. But my, my one that loves to go outside and shoot basketball on the trampoline, but he's going to be five foot seven. He ain't playing. He ain't playing basketball anymore. Yeah. Uh, what's crazy is when we look at the youth wrestling, right? Um, this guy Andrew Wolf. He, I think he's probably going to take over for Jamie Milkovich at Maple Heights. Andrew Wolf is. He's a, he's an East Central guy. He's from he's from down here with us. He's from Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. So Good, Harrison, great guy. Harrison has uh, a rival, East Central Indiana. And that's where the Wolf family is. Andrew's yeah. brother is the head coach there. Great guy. Andrew yeah. Wolf with a big old square jaw. Great guy. Russell for Coach Goldman at Indiana. I love him. Doesn't he doesn't he coach for somebody else right now? Or didn't well, he? Co- well, 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 Aurora. they they live in Aurora. Which is awesome because he had to wear green. And if he grew up at East Central, I bet you that chapped his ass to no end. <laughs> so my kids first match or like second match ever was against Andrew's son. And it was my fault. I didn't get my kid warmed up and they have this crazy barn burner match and ends up like 13 to 12. And I don't even know who I did. My kid won, but whatever. But Andrew Wolf gave me some of the greatest advice ever. He said, you cannot make your kids love this sport. You absolutely cannot. 
He goes, but you can absolutely make them hate it. You know, um, people have asked me a lot about that. And, and I, I said from the beginning that I was going to do everything I could to help my son love the sport. Um, I let him stay in three sports until just this year. He actually played three sports. Um, and he came to me and he decided that he wants to just wrestle now. Um, and I, I was really happy to not be in baseball. I will tell you that, but, um, he hasn't cut weight yet. So even this year, you know, he's blood round at junior high state. Um, he hasn't cut weight. Um, you know, and I know that that's one of the big things that makes people hate the sport. Um, I've let him develop his own style. I haven't told him he has to wrestle a certain way. Um, I just try to help guide him. My whole goal is when we're all said and done that he and I can go to an NCAA wrestling tournament and have the time of our life together. Um, that's my goal. And if that means that he was on the podium, great. If it means he wasn't on the podium, okay, too. Um, uh, I hope that he finds a job he, that he loves, a, a family that he loves, and and we can go do some cool things together. Um, but, you know, he was on the podium in sixth grade at, at OAC. And so he's right there. He's, he's pretty good. But I don't know. I don't know what that means in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to chastise him because he loses a match or doesn't make weight or I just, I, you know, I just don't want it to be like that. Yeah. I, I refuse to have it be like that. I got mad at my son Thomas this year. He like just didn't want to practice. I was just like, I went out and put my stuff out on and I was like, and I just walked down the hall and he's like, why are you leaving me? I'm like, you want to leave? Don't you get your stuff on? Let's go. Yeah. So, so we left. He got his stuff on. We went home. He didn't want it. He wanted to like do what he wanted to do. And I was like, that's not what coach is doing. We got a great youth coach, Jeff Barney. And I was like, you're not just going to come in and do what you want to do. You're not going to sit against the wall. Yeah. So I just stopped taking him. I was like, we're not going to go anymore. And then the other dude, Ferdinand, the seven-year-old, that's the five-year-old. Um, uh, he finished the year out playing basketball. And then he still went to wrestling one day a week. Um, the last basketball practice he had before uh, state wrestling we drove up by the wrestling room because it's a it's a all it's a K through twelve campus, and where his basketball practice was is like the bus garage in another building. So right. we drove up towards the wrestling room, and he's like, "Wait a minute, are we going to the wrestling room?" And I said to him, "I said, dude, you don't ever have to go in that wrestling room again if you don't want to. It's up to you." I'm like, yeah. "If you want to smash people on the football field, and you want to be really good at everything else, you'll wrestle, yeah. right?" You want to just body bag people on the on the football field? Wrestling's the thing for it. Straight up. You know that. Well, and, and I tell people all the time, I, I I tell kids that I'm trying to get to wrestle, I always tell them, wrestling doesn't have to be your favorite sport. No. Um, I said, you know, if football is your favorite sport, great. I said, just give me – if you give me, unfortunately, four and a half months, um, you know, I, I'll take it. Look, if you want to give me six or you want to give me eight, I'll take that too. Um, but uh, it doesn't have to be your favorite sport. It doesn't have to be my kid's favorite sport. Now, look, I I'll tell you, my my youngest one who's 10, he just smiles all the time. That's and he, he loves wrestling. But if he doesn't win a tournament, it's not that big of a deal. Where my eighth grader, if he doesn't win a tournament, for him, in his mind, it's the end of the world. Um, they're just two different kids, and they handle it two different ways. Yeah. Uh, so I have, uh, two nephews that qualified this year for O'Carver, and this is like more of the death of the three, three sport athlete, I think that's coming. And I think yeah. we've alluded to it because of specialization. And, and right. you know, you just said one of your kids, it's the first year you're not doing baseball, but, um, they, they do three sports. Owen yeah. Miller and Bodie Miller do three sports. Right. And, um, Bodie is, uh, he qualified this year as a freshman. He went Owen two. He battles, but he was overmatched. The guys were better than him, right? Right. Um, they got a great program, and I'm pretty confident he'll make some jumps. And he's got to deal with, uh, you know, he's got to deal with uh, Abe Hermes, right? Yeah. That's who beat him in the blood round one year to place at Junior High State. That's who beat him in the semifinals of the district. Abe Hermes is pretty good, right? Right. Um, and the other guy, Owen, gets pinned the first match by a guy who made the finals. A guy from down by you, I want to say. Uh, Ashton Hendricks pinned my nephew first round. I think he's from Greenview. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
good kid, right? Tough kid, mm-hmm. funky, wrestles hard. Um, so then my nephew wins a match, and then he's in the blood round. Well, he's been beaten the blood round the last two years. So guess what? He's like, this ain't it. This ain't the year this is going to happen. I'm going to get it done. And he, he beat a pretty good freshman from uh, Galleon Northbourne, and he, he ended up fourth, right? But I can tell you, wrestling's his third favorite sport, right? right. And the, the reporter, one of the reporters from the Sandusky Register was like, man, I keep interviewing your nephew, and he's always got a big smile on his face. I said, yeah, because he's never going to have to do any of this again. This is over for him. Yeah. And he takes it for what it is. He's going to take the lessons from it. He's going to take the work ethic from it, the character it's revealed in him. And and he's going to run track in college. He's going to run track in college. He's a state placer in track, too. So we're talking about a guy who's all Ohio in two sports. Right? 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 Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I, again, it, it doesn't have to be your favorite sport. It just happens to be yours and mine. Yes, exactly. There's that. Exactly. And my one kid's into it. He, he tells me what Cardish Storacci did. To uh, Mikey Labriola. Yeah, Labri- or Carter Strachey pinned him. The guy, because he tried to roll and he was on his back too long. And I was like, the dude's five, is seven and he can analyze the matches and he's got it figured out. But you know what? He likes playing basketball. That's fine. But you know what? That, that, that'll that probably change. It'll change because there are That's so fine. many kids that, that want to play basketball. There aren't that many that want to wrestle. And, sure. and you know, I... I we talk about it all the time and we just talk about, you know, my son was around the sport so often that when he finally did start wrestling and he started wrestling in matches, his wrestling IQ was already higher than everyone else's just because he was around it all the time. Yeah. Um, They're saturated. Yeah. They're saturated. I mean, by my, my daughter will come home, you know, and like I said, she, she plays high level volleyball and she'll be like, dad, why are we- you know, why was, why was, why weren't, wasn't he moving his feet and he wasn't changing his level. He wasn't penetrating on his shot. Like what was, and I'll be like, you know, she, she can coach it. She's, and I'm like, Avery, why don't you wrestle? And she's like, nah, no interest. And I'm like, all right. So, you know, you talk about your girls team, you know, one with, with four placers, two champs. And what were the other two placers? Uh, Leah Willen was a freshman and she got uh, third at 100. And then our heavyweight Jess Edwards, who was, you know, started wrestling as a freshman. Um, wow. So you had two thirds and two champs. Uh, no, she got six. Jess got so, six. So we a had six, a, a third and two champs. Yep. And, you know, Chloe, Chloe has a younger sister that'll be a, uh, a freshman next year. Is that Riley? Yeah, Riley. I interviewed her. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice we, which, girl. Which is funny. She has never, she has never, ever talked to me. She doesn't talk to so males. Awesome. <laughs> and, and she talked to you. She did high five me last week, and that's the first time that's ever happened. Dude, her so. interview's great. Go watch it. She's I know. Very, I did. very. It's it's awesome. She did a I great did, job. I told her in the room. I said, "I'm really offended, Riley." <laughs> uh, what would you say? You know, what was the aha moment that you guys had, and what was the highlight? When did you know you had the team title clinched in um in 2023 for the first ever OHSA Girls State Tournament? What was the moment that you knew? <laughs> well, look, I'm a math teacher, so. Um, you knew <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, I keep, you know, and, and coach Baird would, he'd look at me and he'd go, I, I just thought, I, I don't know if we can do it. I can't believe we lost that match. I can, and I'd be like, calm down, man. Listen, everybody else is fighting the uphill battle. We're on the downhill. We only got to win this many or this team's got to lose. And I, I keep a paper in my pocket. And as it happens, I just tick them off. Um, so as soon as it happened, I knew. When was it? That was in the, ooh, was that, I think it was right after the semi round. We knew. So um, you, you won. You didn't have to come back and wrestle the next day. No, we didn't have to wrestle. That's so day. awesome, dude. Yeah, hey, you're just like Graham and, and, and uh, St. Ed's, man. You didn't have yeah, to come back sure. and wrestle. For sure. You know, and it was, it was awesome because, you know, last year we didn't have any boy state qualifiers, um, you know, which was really hard for me to take. Um, so I did a lot of things different this year. And, um, you know, we had three qualifiers on the boys side, all of them are returning. Um, what, so one of them placed and then the girls having the season that they did, it was, uh, it was a fun year. So I think you're 138 maybe, or 144. Which one, which one? I don't, well, we had, we had both there. So who wrestled the parish kid in the crazy match? The place? Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that was, I, I wouldn't say that I would say that that was the best refereed match, but that was uh, our 44. That match was insane by the way yeah insane the officiating the last second scores the overtime 
dude, that was one of the best matches I watched. Whether their officiating was bad or not, both kids were putting it out there, man. Oh yeah, no, that there's they, nothing against either kid. Nothing against either kid. They they both laid it out there, um, you know. And that's uh, what's funny is he was at 38 earlier in the year, and my 44 was at 44, and and they decided about they halfway. They swapped, um, and it and it did them both favors, um, you know. Uh, he was the 44 pounder was his. He had lost a season last year to a torn meniscus. Um, so, you know, and he was, he lost in the blood round to go to state his freshman year. So um, to be there this year, um, you know, hopefully next year we can, we can get him on the podium. His dad's actually on my staff. His dad was a state champ at Harrison. Okay. Where do we go from here as far as Harris wrestling? Harrison wrestling has all the boys qualifiers back. And do you have all the girls back too? No, we lost uh, two of the girls qualifiers. Okay. Um, but I think all the placers, uh, all the placers back for the girls. All the placers, all the placers are back. Two champs, both placers are back. Um, you know, we have a, a returning girl that was a runner up last year that didn't place this year. So she's back. Um, we, we have a lot of points that are back. Um, you know, our boys team, we, we think that we are going to be in a better spot. We had two, uh, alternates that are, that are back as well. So, really five guys and and I'd like to think that we have another um you know kid that's going to be a placer that, that's going to be there for us so you know and then add in some some freshman pieces and um you know we're coming to top gun next year so that'll be that'll be fun a fun little uh go for us um and you know and, and I'll be honest next year we're taking off between Christmas and New Year's first time ever in my career coach um, Anderson said he's doing that next year with his team they're taking off a bunch of time they wouldn't normally take off the way the way it falls it, it just makes sense um you know we're wrestling our, our cincinnati holiday tournament on the 22nd and 23rd i always give my kids day off after they compete um you know especially in a tournament like that so that's the 24th well obviously then we're not going to practice on the 25th look i went to a high school that we practiced on the 25th i'm not doing that to my kids um Damn. you know so so we won't yep. practice on the 25th so if you want to go to Medina or Brexville or any of those, those are going to be on like the 27th, 28th, 29th, yeah. whatever they are. They're brutal. You're, you're going to do that off a, off a, you know, a two day break and then a two day practice. No, I'm not doing that to my kids. Okay. So it's an easy question with this one, a shameless promotion. How do you defend, so. how do you defend what you've built in the girls state championships? How do you guys get back? And yeah, the targets on your back. How do you defend what you've built? Hey, we we uh we use defense wipes every day in practice. Because you should. Every, every every day, our girls get them every day because you know generally they don't they don't they want to shower when they get home. So we we make them defense wipe before they leave. I'm gonna tell you right now, the best secret with defense, these individual whites, dude. Guy Seiko has bailed me out of the grease in multiple national parks with this little beauty right here. <laughs> Trust me, I. I I promise you, this has bailed me out of the grease in the woods more than I can actually want to actually admit. And especially with my sons out on a hike when nature oh, for sure. Falls. Oh, it's not good. But they're fabulous. Um, found a new purpose for them. It, my kid wears the eye black. Oh, it yeah. It's the eye black off, right? So, but how do you nice. do it? Seriously, like, right? How, how do you defend the title? You won the first ever. How do you win another title at Harrison and girls wrestle? Well, I think, I think the, the thing that we just have to tell the girls is, you know, look, you have to decide if what we did was a pretty cool thing, you know, getting the state championship rings and things like that. You want to do that again? Well, we got to put in the time. Um, and, and I will say it. I mean, today we worked out after we, we were on the mat for a little bit today after school, um, you know, boys and girls do, we do separate in the off season, uh, but we lift together. So um, you know, after the boys worked out on the mat, they went in the weight room before the girls went in on the mat, they went in the weight room. So we still do things together. Um, and so we're going to get stronger. Uh, we're going to bring up some of these girls that are going to fill some of the weight classes. We didn't fill every weight class this year. We're going to fill them next year. Uh, so we have some girls that, uh, we have to get ready and, and they're going to be in weight classes where the opportunities are going to be there. You know, pressure is a privilege. Um, you know, I, I heard that a couple of days ago and, and that, that statement really meant something to me. You know, if, if no one's giving you pressure, that means you probably didn't do something, you know, you, you're not doing anything worth doing. 
Um, so the pressure is going to be on us. Um, that's a privilege. Um, and, and we're going to embrace it. We're going to embrace the pressure on the girl side. Boys, obviously, is always, you know, pressure qualifying for the state tournament or placing in the state tournament. So we're going to embrace that pressure. It's a privilege. Um, and I'm going to tell these kids, you know, it's uh, – there's a lot, lot worse things that you can be doing with your life. There's a lot worse things that can be going on. Um, you know, having being able to have that pressure that you have to face and that you can become a hero, um, you know, or you can wilt under the pressure. But having the pressure is a privilege. I guess the last thing I have for you, man, you've you've answered my questions about the girls' state championship and how you think you're going to defend it, and you know, dealing with pressure and embracing it. Um, you look like a million bucks. When I saw you, I'm like, hey, what's going on? Where, where the rest of you go? How much weight have you lost? Uh, 54 pounds. Man, you I, look fabulous. How big I would right you get? Now, I right now weigh, uh, so I weigh 184. This is what I used to make my cut to 167 at weekly. So I'd oh weigh God. 183, 184. This is the lightest I've weighed since I was 23 years old. Wow. Dude, uh, I, hey, listen, I got to get on whatever you're on. I'm 260 pounds, man. I was 237. It was the It'll highest I've ever been in my it was 237 is the highest I'd ever been in my life. Um, I was snoring like crazy. My wife was ready to kick me out of the room. My blood pressure was through the roof. Um, I was, my knees were hurting, uh, you know, and, and I'll, I'll tell you what, what was the last thing that, that you know, broke the, the straw that broke the camel's back. It was me and about five other guys that were D one athletes. And I was standing around and I was looking at them and I was like, shit, I'm the biggest out of all of us. I'm like, it doesn't have to be this way. I, these guys are in good shape. Well, why, why am I not? Um, and it really just comes down to the, the it, look, when, when your kids are small, it's really hard because you don't have time to, to have time for yourself if you want to give your kids the time they deserve. Well, now my youngest is 10, you know, and, and he would rather be out jumping on the trampoline or he walks up to the pond and goes fishing or, you know things like that. So now there's, there's time. Me and my wife decided to do it together. My wife's lost 35. I've lost 50, almost 55. Um, we're both healthier. Uh, and, uh, look, I, I had kids late. I mean, I, I got a 22 year old and I got a 10 year old. So, um, I want to be around when my grandkids are around. I want to be able to roll around on the mat with, with my son, that's an eighth grader. Um, you know, so, uh, to do that, you got you got to be in shape. Now, the downfall of that is I got back on the mat and tore my bicep immediately when I got back on the mat this year. So, <laughs> can I see um, it? Is it sagging? Did uh, you fix it? it? Yeah, it, it, oh, it man. was sagging. Oh, the hair is not even grown back in yet. I just got cleared to uh, to really start going through rehab heavy. So, stop rustling live. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't I don't wrestle live anymore. I just want to be able to drill, and I, not even a hard drill. I just want to be able to drill so my son can feel what it's supposed to feel like and and um and and just be able to have those moments with him i, I want to like i said i want to create opportunities that that we can you know have have things that we can look back at and smile about and uh, uh i just want to i want to do that with with the kids on my team i want to do it with my with my athletes and obviously sometimes we we all get out of control a little bit and yell maybe a little more than we'd like but um just want to make i want to make wrestling a positive for as many people as possible i love it I love it, Chad Dennis. I appreciate it. Um, do you have anything else for you uh, for me that I did maybe not didn't ask you or didn't bring up, or do we got any tournaments coming up? Any camps? Anything good that you can? No, I mean, hey, you, can, you know, you, you're talking about Barbarian, Barbarian Nationals, and Athena Nationals next November down in Harrison. Um, come down, they're great, great preseason events. When is um, it? Do you have a it's date no, on it yet? November. It's that first weekend in November. So what is that? November. Hold uh, on. Uh, I got it right here. November third, fourth uh, and fifth. So fifth November fourth, Barbarian. November fifth is uh, Athena. It, it's it. This year was flipped. We went girls on Saturday, boys on Sunday. I don't know what I'm going to do uh, next okay. year. I haven't quite made that decision yet, but but yeah, we we run that. Barbarian is a great sponsor of that tournament. Uh, Champions get singlets, uh, courtesy of Barbarian Apparel. Um, you know, so that's that's a great that's a great thing for us. Um, you know, I just kept thinking we wanted to go to good tournaments, and we kept having to drive to Cleveland. So I said, screw it, let's do one in our own backyard. Uh, What's well, working out? What's working yeah. out? I've heard nothing but good things. Josh obviously does a great job of it, man. And you you just got to keep keep plugging away like you are. And 
having a girls' national tournament in your own gym is a pretty cool thing. And I think that the uh, proof's in the pudding. You got a pretty yeah. good girls' team, man. Well, and, and uh, you know, look, and, and the only thing I can say, and, you know, we said this earlier, we, we have to keep people involved in this sport. Um, less and less people are staying involved in the sport. As For us as coaches, it's hard to fill our coaching positions. It's hard to, um, you know, get people that are loyal to school districts and things like that. So, um, you know, make it as positive as possible as coaches and, and try to keep as many people in this sport as we can. Coach Dennis. I appreciate your time. You were like, hey, can we do this quick? I think we're, we ended up over an hour here. So a true over the barbarian hour. I appreciate your time. Um, no, no problem. I will hopefully be down into the Cincinnati area to see Josh here sometime in the summer. And if I can, I'll stop in and uh, hang out with him, maybe get some lunch. All right. Yeah, sounds great. Sounds great. All right, and uh, if you get a chance, I know it's probably not a great memory of his, but you'll have to talk to Andrew Wolf about his senior year state tournament. It's a legendary story down here. All right. I'll talk to him about it. Hey, I appreciate the time. And um, let's see if I'm able to end this thing and keep you around. Stick around if you can, all right? Yeah.